we're in a bear market, right? Crypto seems to be crashing. We ask ourselves questions like, do we even need tokens? What does it mean having tokens for everything? So today I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the ideas on the future, on uh, how, how might this technology look like? So maybe an easy way to start uh, is just by thinking, what's in the mind of a really successful crypto entrepreneur? Uh, I was talking to Andrew, uh, Andrew from Nilion, um, who's building now uh, a really interesting application that's very basically creating a blockchain that is a layer one that is not actually a blockchain, serving for a lot of blockchains. He's also the creator of two of the biggest cryptocurrency out there. And he talks about things like building a phenomenal team, timing a wave, rewarding tokenomics. What really stuck to me was this combination of timing a wave and having a disrupt disruptive technology. Why? Because it's kind of contradictory, right? How, how do you disrupt something that is already being disruptive every week? And I think uh, Peter Thiel actually puts it very clearly in his book, Zero to One, uh, where he introduces the concept of finding a contrarium narrative. Things like companies like Apple, Uber, and Airbnb did. For Andrew, again, that's creating a non-blockchain for blockchains. For me, I guess we'll find out. Uh, but we, before we even start talking about the future, we have to understand the past. It's the fifth bear market in crypto. And the key difference in this one is that it's actually very correlated to the stock market. So that indicates a level of maturity, which is good. But in the last couple of weeks, we had the cryptocurrencies crashing further. And I'm going to explain this very briefly because this is not the, the objective of the presentation. I could dedicate a, 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 an entire other tech talk for this. But the reason is basically an appropriate use of the technology and a lot of greed. After the DeFi boom, the space started to get more and more competitive. And we had uh, a lot of different applications started to pop up. The space got super crowded. And after it started to slow down, and we actually see the total value received slowing down, the number of active services actually increased. So now suddenly we have all of the income coming from other lending platforms, which creates a huge contagion risk. It's funny how uh, cryptocurrencies are actually speed running the history of finance in, in just a matter of weeks, right? But it's exactly what happened. Then price goes down, we have a chain reaction of mass liquidations, and suddenly everything is falling down. So I think the key takeaway here is centralized companies, CFI, made bets on the price. Now they're biting dust. But blockchain is not meant to be a casino. So just going super quickly about what this technology even means. Computers started being a device, uh, something to send information, process information, and store information. When we had more and more information to be stored, processed, we had more demand. We started to have more of these computers, so we needed to connect them. So that's the internet. It's a network of computers. So we decided, at that time, we didn't know what was going to happen. We were in the 90s. We, we didn't know where we, this was going. So we created a system in which we will give the processing and the storage for certain specific computers. Suddenly, we have the cloud. But the issue with that is we have censorship of data, single point of failure, and a need of trust. And this is an issue because, as you see, uh, in 2008, uh, we see big flaws in the system. So we need to build something for volume, something for, as my friend Sam Heck says, when you have a lot of volume, you need redundancy. So blockchain is basically building redundancy for the internet. That's all it is. It's decentralizing the processing and the storage in a peer-to-peer -peer network of computers. Now, ever wonder why Sam, uh, founder of FTX, also MIT alum, is investing so much on AI? Raise your hand who thinks it's because he's smart. Well, he's smart. <laughs> By decentralizing the server computer, what we're really doing is enabling a faster, frictionless, and safer exchange of information with our machines. It's a flywheel effect. You get started with programmable decision making, smart contracts, and autonomous consensus, DAOs, and you suddenly have less friction, which brings more data, which creates better AI, which creates less friction. 
So we, the end result here is that we're building better applications to solve the biggest challenges of humanity. So <laughs> a peek into the future. What do you think this next generation of Web3 will look like? So for me, it looks a little bit like this. We have applications that yield real sustainable returns from capturing real world data. Using devices we already use in our early day, everyday life. Tokens incentivizing for better use of the commons, better use of the public goods. Michael Kelly, founder of uh, Open Forest Protocol, we're gonna mention briefly, he makes this nice distinction of, we should make this the basis of finance, not the objective of financialization. And that's the big mistake we're doing right now. So three quick examples of how this can look like if we do things right. One is data storage. And I'm going to give three examples, but there's millions of examples. Um, I, I hope you can uh, reach out afterwards and we can explore this. But data storage is a big one, right? Uh, we have um, the cloud, then we have Dropbox. Filecoin is a startup that is actually has proven that through the centralized and permissionless storage, file storage and access can be faster, more secure, and less expensive than the cloud. Essentially, you put the excess storage capacity on your computer that you actually have, and you earn passive income. Isn't that crazy? Instead of having to buy a miner, your computer is already an, a miner. You're, you're connecting to this peer-to-peer -peer network, and you're getting passive income by being a validator. Today, Filecoin has approximately the equivalent storage of uh, capacity, the, sto the equivalent storage capacity of Google in 2015. Google in 2015, two years. In two years, they have the capacity of Google in 2015. This is just to give you an idea of how this technology can really uh, change the game, right? If you do it correctly. Another example is Helium for telecom. You have decentralized wireless network of computers um, where the miner is actually someone that buys this telecommunication device. Yes. Your miner is actually a hotspot with an antenna that you can use and you can install in your roof of your house and get tokens for it. And you're actually helping replace the telecommunication uh, structures. Big telecom companies have these huge antennas that they put the capex up front and then you have to actually uh, charge their user for that. Now they're changing the game. We're starting from the bottom up. And actually the network works even faster. So you see the, the big picture here, right? And finally, a, a last example I'm very passionate about is uh, carbon credits. And uh, I'm going to put an example with forestry, but this can also be done with uh, transport, for instance. Um, not going to spend a lot of time with it, but carbon credits are basically uh, a, certif a certificate based on the validation of green projects like protected trees in a forest. And there's a big barrier here, a big brick wall between the developers of green projects and the enablers that are validating these green projects and they're bringing it to market. So people are wanting to be going to a net zero economy. Like they, they want to be sustainable, but we don't have the carbon credits because the validation is being run by two or three companies. These two or three companies dominate the space and in the last 20 years they have brought 250 accredited projects. 250! Do you know how many projects we have out there that can be brought into market? At least 100,000. We would ne we'll need 8,000 years for this to happen if we continue this way. And you see that venture capital, I work in VC, and all of the money is being spent in carbon tech and accounting. Nothing is going to the validators. So uh, there's this company called Open Forest Protocol that is actually building the validation system using technology, similarly to Helium. So the NGO uploads the forest uh, project then somewhere with a cell phone or a technology like a drone can verify that information. And finally, you get a network constantly verifying the transmission and you get tokens for it. So again, you're having, basic, uh, you're having passive income using a miner that is actually something that you already have. So again, this can be used in energy, transport, waste management, healthcare data. So just to close, notice the commonalities here. You have censorship resistance, no single point of failure, trustlessness, which is already what we have. But now we have incentivized systems that get, give passive income, and your miner is actually a usable machine. I believe in a multi-chain future. 
um, which you have all of these verticalized blockchains and you have the general purpose blockchains and you have even things that are not even a blockchain, like Nilium. Um, and all of this is going to work together. Building this network of computers. Again, it's the internet. We're looking into this now and we're, you're seeing like everything is crashing. We're actually climbing this mountain in the back. Yeah, it's a cold mi mountain right now. It's a little bit cold. But you, you get a picture, right? We need to look further away. Let's build this together and create a future in which companies doing good have an unfair advantage. Let's build the same way engineers and builders always have, by sharing ideas and resources. This is a culture based in rich uh, openness and collaboration. So I just invite you all to <laughs> think further away in the future and build in the, in the space. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's amazing to have you.